Instilling fear in the hearts of the masses is really a hallmark trait of the Nephilim and the giant offspring. You know, we, we can just think about Goliath and how he used fear and intimidation to paralyze the armies of Israel. And I think one of the biggest tragedies of the past 17 months is that so many of us have been incapacitated by fear. Incapacitated by fear. Hey, welcome back to Blurry Creatures. If this is your first time tuning in, uh, we highly suggest you guys go back to the beginning of our podcast and listen to some of those other episodes, kind of leading up to where we are now. The last four or five episodes have been pretty heavy, and we've been pretty deep down the rabbit hole. So it's easy to come on a podcast like this, you know, just think, wow, this is insane. <laughs> These guys are crazy. We talk about cryptic creatures, and it is creatures related, but we've been really in depth about how these Nephilim creatures spawned and where they came from ancient history and we're looking for better answers on blurry creatures so if you come into this unaware of kind of where we are it's easy just to have a knee-jerk reaction so go back listen to some of the other episodes figure out how bigfoot and other weird beings fit into the overarching narrative which we filter through the bible and I know a lot of people out there have had some PTSD with Christians, the church, and other things. But on this podcast, we feel like it's the best source to make sense of modern day cryptid sightings, UFO sightings, alien abduction stories, whatever weird thing you have heard about. We feel like the Bible talks about this stuff, sometimes specifically, but often if you dig back and you look for some context supporting some of the things said, you'll find there are answers. So we're looking out for better answers. We're bringing Dr. Laura Sanger back on the show. She wrote a book called The Roots of the Federal Reserve, Tracing the Nephilim from Noah to the U.S. Dollar. We appreciate you guys listening. Everyone out there, the podcast has really exploded in the last three weeks, doubled in size, and we just want to say thank you for everyone listening and sharing this with people. Um, we feel like this truth is important, and you guys are tuning in and sharing it with people and that's awesome. If you want to support the show and what we're doing and help us make more content, right now we're producing uh, one episode a week. We'd love to get down to producing two. We do have bonus episodes for you. If you become a member, you can listen to those. We have five or six up there already, as well as a Facebook chat where we talk about guests, upcoming shows, questions, and other ways you guys can interact with us. But we're excited to announce our first ever guest members chat. That's right. We do members chats. Uh, every once in a while, for those who support the show, and on August 11th, 8 p.m. Central Time, Dr. Laura Sanger is going to come on, and we're going to let her talk for half an hour or so about ley lines and grids, and then we're going to open up discussion. So that's one of the cool benefits of being a member of Blurry Creatures, is we try to interact with you guys directly, and we try to get our guests to interact with you as well. So head on over to BlurryCreatures.com, support the show, help Luke and I make more content, and uh, let's get on with the show. The history of our Earth is so different from what we can imagine. Enjoy the journey. The Smithsonian, that if they found out about a large skeleton somewhere, was to go get it. I'm going to assume at least one person is right, because if one person's right, it busts the paradigm. It all goes back to the fallen chair. And the problem with the modern day church, they have a very truncated view of the supernatural. This backdrop is just pregnant with all kinds of meaning associated with this Mount Hermon event. Whoa. 
and this guy defects from the kingdom. That's a big deal. Welcome back to Blurry Creatures. Thank you for coming back on. This is your third time. Our first couple episodes, we really got into the Nephilim host and ideas like that. And a lot of people, Laura, asked us questions about frequencies in particular, ley lines and grids, other things like that. But you sent us an email to talk about some of the more controversial things that you kind of brought up a little bit on our last episode with the, the Nephilim Mother Project. And we could talk about fear, too. What is a, a war of frequencies? A lot of people talk about that on our show, like lowering the frequencies, raising your frequencies. And what mind control tactics do Nephilim hosts use to try to enslave us? So we could, we're kind of getting into a little bit more of the, the depth of the things we kind of covered in our first episode. And just to give you a heads up, Tim Alberino talked extensively in our last episode about the abduction phenomenon happening. So I feel like, you know, the Nephilim mother host stuff is kind of in line with where our listeners are. It, even though you said it's really heavy, we're kind of there. Like Tim went into multiple hours describing what's going on. And and I hadn't really personally considered the magnitude of what some of these people are describing as happening around our world. So you can hit us with however much heavy information you want because that was a, that was hard to hear. And I think... I think our listeners are pretty much like, whoa, what just happened? Mm. So we're we're ready for all those topics. Sorry, that was kind of a long-winded intro. I don't know which, where, which, which way you want to start, which one you want to start on, but um, yeah, we're just happy to have you back. Well, thank you. Thanks for having me back. I think probably what I'll do is I'll work my way to ending with a hybrid mother program or the hybrid breeding program, um, but I think a good place to start is probably in understanding what the mind control tactics that the Nephilim hosts are using right now. Because I think in order to understand all this, we first need to break that down. Uh, So maybe I'll start there if that's okay with you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So um, I, I spoke about this in our last podcast, but the Nephilim agenda is you know, it was unleashed during the days of Noah and it's this plan to defile the human genome through the propagation of a hybrid race. And the purpose of that is to overthrow God's kingdom. So if you keep that in mind, that will really tie in all throughout what I speak about, but especially when I um, share about the hybrid breeding program. But I think what is so important is that we must not be deceived in thinking that the Nephilim only roamed the earth in the days of antiquity. So what I submit to you and your listeners is that there are Nephilim hosts alive today. And they're those individuals that have partnered with the spiritual forces of darkness to carry out the Nephilim agenda. And when we think about it, many of them are in fact the titans of industry and banking and media and healthcare and academia, uh, you know, high tech industries, and then even the political establishment. So one thing to keep in mind is that at the core of the Nephilim agenda is this goal to strip us of our humanity. And so Nephilim hosts, they hate the fact that we're created in the image of God. And so their plan is to defile our human genome through transhumanism. And so if Uh, If they're successful in turning us into hybrids, then what that can do is that can actually disrupt our ability to commune with creator God. And the speed at which they're advancing towards accomplishing this goal is really alarming. And so let me give you some, some examples of this. So in the last 20 years, I would say science has really made these leaps and bounds in technology and being able to create humans 2.0. So in 2005, you had scientists who discovered what's called the VMAT2 gene, and that's known as the God gene. And this is the gene that is thought to be responsible for our capacity to be able to develop this spiritual connection with God. And so if that gene were to be altered, that could disrupt our ability to commune with God. But then in uh, 2010, there was a geneticist named Craig Ventner. And what he did is he created synthetic life forms by bioengineering a cell. And so what his, um, 
his critics accused him of is actually playing the role of God. And they warn us that these organisms that he created, these synthetic organisms, that they actually can be used as a biological weapon. So the magnitude of what Ventner has done really can't be understated because what experts are saying is that his technology is likened to the development of the nuclear weapon. Because if you take Ventner's technology and then you pair it with CRISPR technology, which is like gene editing software, what that means is then scientists can engineer anything to create synthetic life. And by doing this, they're attempting to usurp creator God. So then in 2019, what happens is there's um, scientists from the Human Brain Cloud Interface Project. They are attempting to create a global super brain through the use of nanobots. And so what this project does is um, it... They're attempting really, like I said, to create this global super brain by connecting networks of human brains with AI to form this hive mind. And so that would be the ultimate in mind control technology. Now, I, I have to say that the only way that Nephilim hosts can hijack our body and turn us into hybrids is if they hijack our mind first. And, um, you know, I've said before that uh, the globalist agenda and the Nephilim agenda, they're serving the same end goal, and that's the total domination of humanity. And so in order to accomplish this, they know that they have to use mind control strategies. And that's why I believe it's so important that we understand what these mind control tactics are so we don't become hoodwinked by them. Yeah. We're talking about the Nephilim hosts and in these and these people that are the titans of industry have they have they literally made a deal with the devil or is this something that happens like on like with with the things of of the promise of the enemy so all, all the riches fame all these things come with it is it a corruption and a slow corruption or they have have they fit, like literally made made a deal essentially i know that's a that's a you know, that sounds like devil went down to georgia but have they made a deal with the devil like in the sense of partnering it sounds like they're partnering mm-hmm. with you know, with, 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 with this Nephilim Moses, is, is that a, is that like a transaction that they've made or is it a, is that a slow corruption? I, I would actually think it's both. So I think there's probably those that it's a slow corruption. You know, when we think about the hunger for greed and the pride of life, um, you know, they could be led down this path where consecutively they're giving in to, Uh, greed or pride of life. And that would lead them then to understanding the only way that they can keep some form of power or money or fame is if they make this transaction. And so uh, kind of this gradual progression. But then I also think there are those, and I'll actually talk about it in the Nephilim Mother Project, but there are those that are actually uh, raised in the Luciferian occult and they make transactions. And so it's not necessarily a gradual thing they know full well what they're doing and they're making that transaction hmm it's like the Aleister Crowley's sort of if you're into the occult and that's your thing then this is this is the team you're on you've already chosen your team okay yeah. there's that story Luke about Robert Johnson who sells his soul at the crossroads to learn how to play the guitar supposedly he does a deal with the devil and then he knows, and then he learns how to play the guitar. I don't know. And that's been sort of this legend where this guy he couldn't play, and then he comes back a year later, and suddenly he's just this, like this jazz musician that's, that blows people away with his guitars. And I come from the music. Looks like Charlie and Charlie Daniels, right? The devil down in Georgia looking for a soul to steal, right? I mean, I was in the music business for about ten years, so there was often times where it felt like something just happened to some artist, and they just blew up, and it, and could have just been a song, could have just been a a thing of the, you know, there's all these whispers in the music business. Oh, that person did X and Y and then they became a mega star. And I don't know. I mean, I don't know how conspiratorial you get with all that, but in that sense, too, you can look at like some of those people and you're talking about, you can look at all the imagery in, in their, in their productions. And it's, I mean, it's pyramids and it's, it's Illuminati. It's all of the occult imagery show starts showing up in, in their videos and in their productions. And it's like, Oh, yeah, we've gotten to some of that. I mean, some of those sent yeah. to us, like where supposedly we, we had one the other day where Beyonce was supposedly supposedly shape shifting. I don't know how specific we want to get, but uh, 
do you think that happens, Laura? Like people literally sign on the dotted line and they become famous? I do. Yes. Wow. I I think I do too. I mean, I've I've been around that idea for a long time, but you're saying you've done way more study into this than we have. So, mm-hmm. and I think that's part of how they can become Nephilim hosts is by recognizing that if if they agree to sell their soul, in other words, then what they're promised in return is millions of dollars, you know, contracts, mm-hmm. those types of things. So just to, for our listeners to make sure we distinguish the difference between a Nephilim host, because Tim talked a lot about hybrids, where people are being abducted and actually being converted into hybrids. A Nephilim host is a human, fully human, that has given themselves over. Mm-hmm. But a hybrid is something completely different. So some people might conflate the two, mix them up, right? Right. Well, okay. I think one of the episodes I was with you, I talked about Nimrod becoming a giver. So yeah. that would be an example of a human becoming a hybrid. And so both can happen. Um, but Nephilim hosts, at least what I've coined in my book and what I've laid out, are humans that partner with the spiritual forces of darkness. Now, they it's possible that they get to a point where then there's this crossover and they they become those hybrids. But there also are hybrids being birthed right now, and that's different from Nephilim hosts. And that's that's what Tim was talking about. It was this sort of, is this whole Nephilim agenda now happening off Earth because of some sort of something with, and, and then there's the whole abduction. So we, our listeners, if they have listened in order, would have would be here and understand that that, that was something we talked about that's different, and yet the overarching arching agenda seems to be, I mean, it's all very aligned, right? I mean, you pick a team. That's not, I don't know, it's the easiest way. I come from the sports world and they come from the music world. It's like, you pick a team. You're on a team. You, you, you can't not be on a team. There are no passive, there's no passive spectators anymore. And I think the Bible's pretty specific about that as well. Mm-hmm. It's either you serve God or you serve mammon. Uh, no, there's not a, uh, you know, I'm just going to sit on the sidelines and watch, even though I think a lot of people in, in their ignorance or, or willful ignorance decide that they're, they don't want to get involved or whatever it may be. But I know we've kind of, we've already started tangentially rabbit holing here. I don't, I don't want to well, g- get off base. I but. did have a question for you, Laura, that I wanted to ask last time that is, are they doing this differently than the first time? Because obviously Genesis six, there's this, they're on earth. There's a physical birth. We have giants. God floods the world. So do they come up with something new? Like, okay, we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to do it some way different. We're going to do it in spaceships or whatever they're doing. Tim makes it sound like they're abducting people and they're doing it in the sky and these ships and stuff. It's off Earth kind of, or it's in our atmosphere. I don't know where it happens, but it's not happening on the ground where God can flood the world. But he said he wouldn't do that again. But is it the same kind of agenda? It's just different tactics. I would say definitely it's the same agenda. And, you know, if you would have asked me that question a month ago, I might have had a different response. Um, Mm. But I'm actually, you keep like egging me to talk about what I want to end with. But okay, um, sorry. (laughs) (laughs) We got to build up to the big finale, right? Let's go. Let's go with the Hegelian dialect because that's been something that people have been wanting to know. We've got questions about. I want. We'll get there, Nate. Hey, that's good. No, you want to. You want to run to the end. All yeah, right. our listener is going to, they're going to listen to the whole thing now. That's the good thing. <laughs> right. you're, like my wa- you're like my wife when she decides she doesn't want to read books anymore. She just reads the last the last chapter. Well, and it's like, well, I'm like, why do you do Tim that? just dropped so many grenades on us. It's hard to, it's hard not to just be like, what was, what just happened to us on this show? You know? Mm-hmm. Well, you know, in all of this, I think what, what's important to understand is that we, we cannot fall under that mind control because like I said, the only way that, the Nephilim hosts can hijack our bodies and turn us into hybrids as if they hijack our mind first. And so that's why I, I wanted to kind of start with understanding the mind control tactics. Um, because so many of us, like you were saying, Luke, we have to pick a team. Well, we might think we've picked the right team, but we've really come under a spell of mind control. So that's why I, I want to address this. So one of the, before getting to the Hegelian dialectic, one of the uh, other sources of mind control that have actually been used 
on the American psyche for well over a century is behavioral modification strategies. And so what that is, is it's rewarding successive behaviors towards a predetermined outcome and then doling out these punishments for failing to reach the desired outcome. And that's what we're seeing right now with the COVID-19 experimental injection. So those that are willing to get the jab, you know, they're rewarded. They get free beer, free lottery tickets, free donuts. I just heard the other day, free McDonald's. Now, for me personally, that would be a punishment, but for some people, that's a reward. <laughs> and then they also, yeah. you know, you can get into sporting events, you can go to concerts, you have in-person learning, and then you're, you have more freedoms as far as travel. But those who aren't willing to get the jab, you know, they aren't given the same rewards. In fact, in some states, they're treated as substandard citizens. Well, this is classic behavioral modification. It's using positive and negative reinforcement to shape the behavior of the masses. And so we just need to understand that that's what it is. We need to see it for what it is and then not fall for the enticements because they're they're bribing us. You know, they're they're stealing our liberties by bribing us. And so we just cannot fall for the enticements, no matter how much we want free donuts or a lottery ticket or even the freedom to travel. I think that's a big one for people is, you know, I, I want to be able to go to Europe again. I want to be able to go to the Bahamas. I, you know, you want to be able to travel. And so um, we just need to understand that what's busy happening is we our behaviors are being shaped by these positive and negative reinforcements. So that's one strategy. The other strategy is the Hegelian dialectic. And um, this has been used really to entrap us. So let me describe this in more detail. So uh, George Hegel was a German philosopher in the early 19th century. And what he did is he developed a system by which to arrive at a conclusion. And so the dialectic is a method of thinking. So it's a basic brain function of differentiation. So what Hegel believed is that the human mind can comprehend better when two opposites exist. So hot or cold, black or white, Democrat, Republican, conservative, progressive. And this dialectic has been used to control the masses. So in the Hegelian dialectic, you have thesis, antithesis, and synthesis. Or for me, an easier way to think of it is problem, reaction, solution. And this has been used to move the masses uh, to a prescribed outcome that benefits the elite. So what's important to understand is the agenda that drives this dialectic is one that gives the centralization of power to one governing body, and that's the new world order. So under this governing body, what's required of the citizens is complete obedience. So in this system in, of enslavement, individuals only find freedom through obedience to the state. But we know that's not true freedom, right? And so... It's tyranny. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And so um, one of the things that I think is so important for us to understand is that fear is the most powerful driver of mind control. And the globalists know this. And that's why they had to create fear and panic in the masses to roll out their surveillance system. You know, we know that Americans under normal circumstances, there is no way we would tolerate a surveillance system. But unfortunately in 2020, we came under the spell of the Hegelian dialectic. Normally I use, um, I have diagrams that are actually not in my book. I've developed them since. So if your listeners want to see the diagrams, you know, you can go to my website, which is no longer enslaved.com. And then under the articles tab, my most recent article is called the advancement of the Nephilim agenda, the federal reserve COVID-19 and transhumanism. And if you open that up, you'll see these diagrams, but I'll do my best to describe them. So in thinking about the Hegelian dialectic for 2020, Again, what we have is the agenda is the centralization of power. So that stays the same in each dialectic. But we have the problem that was created by the globalist was the outbreak of the virus. And of course, that was fueled by mainstream media propaganda. That created a reaction in the public, which was one of fear and panic. 
And so much so that the masses then turn to their governing bodies for the solution. And this is exactly what they want us to do because they already had the solution in mind. And that was the suspension of our liberties to keep everyone quote unquote safe. So that's the Hegelian dialectic of 2020. Hegelian dialectic of 2021, again, you have the same agenda, which is the centralization of power. This time, the problem that was created by the globalists were the shutdowns. So we had businesses, schools, and church closures, and then you have limited travel. So the reaction that this creates in the public is this desperation to return to some sense of normalcy. So again, we fall right into the trap and we turn to our governing bodies for a solution. And of course, they already have the predetermined solution in mind, and that is the injection passports. You know, if we're if everyone will get an injection, then we can move about freely and we can reopen society with confidence. You know, we've all heard the propaganda that's been going on. Well, thankfully, more and more people are wakening up and realizing that humanity is under assault. And it's really psychological warfare of the highest order. And we've been lured into this war of frequencies. Yeah, I mean, and I know a lot of people listening they think this is kind of conspiracy theory stuff and they and they and they use these words because they don't want to think about it but i mean personally i i deleted my twitter and i just stopped reading the news and i've noticed in my own personal life there's a lot more peace a lot less fear i've kind of just gone about my life as if you know what i mean like there's just these different avenues where i'm going to figure out what's going on in the world and it's not like tuning into whatever website comes up on my phone that tells me this is what's happening around the world, right? And the way they're spinning every narrative every day, it's just, but more and more people are texting me and calling me and saying, man, like, I used to think like maybe some of the news was fake, but now it just feels like the whole thing is just this constant crazy narrative over and over again. Like, you know, we have like, soon we're going to have 10 different strains and they're shutting down India and the Cubans are rioting because they they want the vaccines and you're in the French are writing because you're just like no they're not all you have to do is you know find some of these people's real personal posts and they're like no that's not why we're writing you know we want freedom again so it's but but then I have friends out in California who are just they think I'm insane they think I'm brainwashed and if I post any of this stuff on Facebook man some of the the vitriol and the hate that comes right back at me it's just like it feels like they're under a spell mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It, and I I hear what you're saying, and some people are like, oh, that sounds like the Smurfs. Like, <laughs> you know, that sounds like some 80s cartoon we grew up with, right? Where that's nonsense. But I think there's times, Laura, when I'm scratching my head, and I'm like, I don't understand why the masses don't see this. Mm-hmm. Why can't people see this scam? You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't know. I was the youngest child, so I was always pulling scams to get anything if I was going to pull one off in my family, I had to be real smart to do it, right? Because <laughs> I had three older siblings and two parents. I couldn't just, I had to come up with something good. And it feels like the population's just falling for these like obvious scams. I'm like, that's so obvious. Don't you see it? Mm-hmm. Laura, Laura, one of the things you just mentioned at the end was a, a war of frequencies. Can you explain wh- what you mean by that exactly? Yes. Yeah, so, and it ties in, Nate, to what you were just saying, because, you know, how are we, how are so many people getting hoodwinked? And I think that's where this ties in with frequencies. So we know, you know, from the growing field of quantum physics that all matter has frequency. But what we need to understand is that we're in the midst of unconventional warfare. So I call it a war of frequencies because if we can recognize it for what it is, we can actually rise above the attack. So what do I mean by a war of frequencies? So not only does matter have frequency, but emotions have frequencies. And so, for example, fear is one of the lower frequency emotions, whereas love is one of the higher frequency emotions. Since the outbreak, we know that so many people have come under the spell of these globalist mind control strategies because they've given in to fear. Instilling fear in the hearts of the masses is really a hallmark trait of the Nephilim and the giant offspring. You know, we we can just think about Goliath and how he used fear and intimidation to paralyze the armies of Israel. 
And I think one of the biggest tragedies of the past 17 months is that so many of us have been incapacitated by fear. And, you know, you, you take that and then um, you throw in the propaganda from mainstream media. See, the globalists understand if they can roll out a constant flow of fear-based stories, what happens is it keeps the masses stuck in their primitive brain where you can't access rational thought. So let me explain that a little bit more. So fear, where it originates from is the amygdala. And that's the part of the brain that's considered either the primitive brain, or it's also called the reptilian brain, which I think is interesting to think about. Mm -hmm. And from that point, if you're stuck in that part of your brain, you can't access rational thoughts. So if you're fearful, your ability to process nuanced information is actually impaired, and you're more likely just to blindly follow others instead of using critical thinking skills. So what we find then is there is some fascinating research. I'm always finding these nuggets. I'm like, oh, that's a really good site. Mm -hmm. But HeartMath Institute is a really good site if any of your listeners are interested in diving into this more. But what they've discovered is that the average person has a magnetic field that extends five feet. So then if we think about that in light of the mitigation strategies of social distancing six feet, and then you pair that with all the fear mongering that's going on, what you have is the globalists were effectively able to disconnect our collective magnetic field through the social distancing. So another way to say that is humanity has a collective magnetic field. We're, we're connected with one another. But with social distancing, that got cut off. And so what that leaves us is it leaves us feeling isolated. Well, when we're isolated, we're more easily controlled. When we're isolated, we're more easily deceived. And that's why I think it's so important that we expose this agenda. You know, Ephesians 5.11, it talks about have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. And that's why I'm so thankful, you know, for opportunities like this to come on your show and other shows that I've done, because we, we need to expose these fruitless deeds of darkness. And that's the very purpose why I, I research and write. Um, but check this out for a minute. So let's consider the word pandemic. And if we break it down, one of the root word is pan. And so pan is the name of a Greek god. He was a uh, god of the woods and the fields. And it said that he would make mysterious sounds in the woods that would cause contagious, groundless fear in crowds and in people in lonely spots. And so then you have um, the word panic also originates from pan, as does pandemonium. Pandemonium is a place of uproar and disorder, wild, lawless confusion. So are you beginning to see how this all connects? It's psychological warfare. So a pandemic releases hmm. fear and panic. Now, this happens naturally in the psyche of some individuals, but then you have the accelerant of mainstream media hysteria added to the mix and it leads to contagious, groundless fear in a large swath of the population. And so we have, um, we've seen this. And then tragically, what happens is, you know, in the past 17 months, we've also seen pandemonium break out in the form of riots. And so this really spells out the progression of the psychological warfare that's being waged against us by the Nephilim hosts. You have pan pandemic which releases panic, which leads to pandemonium. So when we think about it, we've we've really been under this constant attack of fear-based messaging, but not only that, we've been bombarded by shame-based messaging and shame is the lowest frequency emotion there is. And, you know, just to use one example, we think about all the mask ma messaging that's been going on. You know, we've been told to wear masks to keep the other safe, or, you know, we wear masks for the health of others, or we wear masks for the good of the community or save grandma. 
Um, but those who, and all of this is, is shame-based messaging, because for those individuals who've actually done their research, and you have to read the articles prior to 2020, because again, propaganda was rolled out hmm. um, all throughout the scientific field as well. And so you have to go back to articles and research that was done prior to 2020. And what you find is that masks do not work at blocking a virus. The size of a virus is so small, it would be like trying to block a gnat with a chain link fence. And then not only that, you know, people are learning that masks weaken your immune system. So for those who chose um, to do their research and discovered that the messaging that we're getting were being told lies, um, and they choose to not wear a mask, they're then told you're being selfish, you're being irresponsible, you're going to get people sick, and that public shaming ensues. And this is what's been going on. And so the Nephilim hosts, they know what they're doing. They know that if they attack us at that lower frequency ranges with fear and shame, what they can do is they divide us and they can disconnect our magnetic field. And that's why it's so important we we understand how we can overcome fear and anxiety. I think it's also interesting that the Temple of Pan is at Mount Hermon. There, strictly, there is a Temple of Pan at Mount Hermon. Oh, Hermon. wow! So we talked about with Dr. Jed Burton and some of the actual schematics of of the mountain itself. It's just, it's just, I think that's just a fascinating antidote. Doesn't Pan Pan play the pipes too? There's a goat boy that plays the pipes. Mm-hmm. This is creatures. This is blurry creatures right here. We're talking about a uh, a half goat creature that's trying to break down your frequencies. And you said pandemonium, pandemic, panic. Mm-hmm. Look, at, look at this. Look at all these weird connections here. I just find it funny too. Like frequencies, it, it reminds me of like maybe the hippies were right when they're talking about all these vibrations. Like you got good vibrations and ba- good vibes, bro. Send the good vibes. Absolutely. Beach boys. Yeah. We're more of a spiritual creature. Then we like to admit, and there's things that can alter sort of these frequencies around us. I, I mean, anyone who's looked at any alternative healing, especially if you go down the route of traditional medicine, mm-hmm. you know, you'll 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 run into so many walls where it's just not working, and you start looking into alternative medicine. This is a lot of what comes up. Some of these doctors, like, if you're li- if you live in this constant state of fear, you you can't heal. Your body cannot get better. What do you mean? You know, and some so many of us, I, I think we don't think about that until we have some sort of health crisis, and then our minds get open to these ideas. And then you're talking about this these fear tactics that are breaking down, sort of our protection. Is it like a spiritual protection around us? You think that God has given us? Yes, absolutely. And hmm. you know, it's it's so important. I think that we learn how to overcome fear um, so that we're not being attacked at these lower frequency ranges. And, you know, in, in light of what I talked about with emotions, having different frequencies, it really makes first John four eighteen make a whole lot more sense. Um, it says there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. So the first step in overcoming fear is actually drawing closer to the one who has perfect love, which is Jesus, because love overcomes fear. And when we think about those frequencies, love is a higher frequency emotion. That's going to overcome the lower frequency emotion of fear. And then the next step of overcoming fear is really to arm ourselves with the truth. You know, if we think about what it's like to live in fear, it's it's a form of captivity. And, you know, John 832 says, then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. And so we know that the truth and, and Jesus being the capital T truth will set us free from fear. And, you know, what I found in my own life is I draw closer to Jesus, the capital T truth. He actually exposes, um, you know, roots of defilement and deception, because it's, it's so important. We understand we are in a battle of biblical proportions. You know, it's, it's a battle between good versus evil. And so we have to understand our enemy and we have to know what the enemy is up to. You know, it makes me think about that passage in Hosea four, six, where it says my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. And so now that we can understand that this is a war of frequencies, we can actually resist fear. Um, you know, you, I think, Nate, you were talking about that 
when we live in prolonged fear, it actually weakens our immune system. That's why we can't heal. And not only that, but prolonged fear, what that does is that pulls us down to that frequency range where the battle is raging. And God knows this. And that's why he warned us, you know, 52 times alone in the Old Testament to fear not. And it, you know, I think about that passage too in 2 Timothy 1, 7, where it says, God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So if we think about that in light of what I've shared, we can't have a sound mind and live in fear. Because remember, fear originates from the amygdala. And when we're stuck there, we can't access rational thoughts. We can't have a sound mind. Mm. And that's why it's so important that we learn how to rise above the frequency of fear so that we don't get deceived by all the lies swirling around us. You know, the, the language of the Nephilim is deception because they're the seed of Satan. Um, so we have to understand those lies and that deception. And when we are living in that place of love and of power and of sound mind, that's when we have discernment to know the truth, to understand that what we're being told on mainstream media is fake. It's false. It's lies. Um, so that really helps. So I, I also wanted to just give some practical ways that we can overcome fear and ways that we can resist it. Um, and if I go back to the HeartMath Institute for a minute, they discovered that the magnetic field that is generated by our heart is more than 100 times stronger than what is generated by our brain. So what does that mean? That means that heartfelt emotions like love, compassion, empathy, gratitude, generosity, those emotions can literally shift the atmosphere and drive out fear. I find that really exciting, uh, you know, to, to understand that we can, we're equipped with the ability to drive fear out if we just get ourselves in that place of releasing those heartfelt emotions. Hmm. Then another practical thing that we can do is we have to get back to regularly meeting in person with one another. We have to go back to what it was like before 2020, because it's so critical that we break off isolation. Because remember, when we're isolated, we're more easily controlled. And this is where I think, um, you know, Zoom meetings are wonderful. What we're doing right now, we're able to meet through Zoom because we're interstate. That makes sense. Or international Zoom meetings make sense. But we have to stop the Zoom meetings for people in our own locale. If if we're meeting with someone that's close by, insist on meeting in person, you know, get off your couch, get out of your house and go meet in person. Because what that does is that reconnects us. And it's literally, I mean, it might seem silly, but our collective sanity is at stake. And so that is really important. It's something very easy we can do as well. And then- We've just gotten lazy. We've gotten lazy, right? We've just gotten... Yeah, Nate, get down, get down from here. We gotta, we gotta bust out our no fear T-shirts from 1989, Luke. Remember those? <laughs> right. Laura, yeah, Laura, I don't want to interrupt, but it's funny. What one, one thing you were saying that that totally like made me think of some something that I'm sure if anyone was raised in the church like I was, and perhaps Nate is that you, you in Sunday school you get the, the armor of God. It's interesting though when you read Ephesians six, they talk about stand firm then with the belt of truth, breastplate of righteousness, shield of faith. Helmet of helmet of uh, salvation, salvation, and the and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and it all sounds like very cartoony and Sunday school Sunday schooly if you if you've been raised in that place. But it's fascinating that we're told to wrap the truth around our waist to, in and, and and we're talking about practicals. It's it's man, it's like I remember coloring this sheet right, like in as a kid in Sunday school, like color color the breast breastplate of righteousness and the belt of truth and all that stuff. And it's just, it's, it's funny though. Cause I, I think one of the schemes of the enemy and especially in, in our day and age is to keep Christians from reading their mm-hmm. Bible. And I've said this multiple times. So everybody listening is probably just sick of me beating this dead horse, but I mean, everything's given to us. It's all, it's all there. The keys to it, the what's going to happen in the end 
It's all been written. Or or reading it with um, a fear based mentality, right? Like getting getting out of the fear and then reading it. Because you can I mean you could tune into the same words, the same message. But here, here's how you beat the fear, the fear yeah. though, Nate. It's it's laid out here, right? You 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 gird yourself with the truth. You use you, you use a shield of faith. You you remember your salvation. You destroy the destroy the fear with the, with the sword of the spirit. I mean, it's it sounds like crazy Sunday school stuff, but man, how practical is it? Like when we look at what's going on around us, like you know, if you don't know the word of God, how how are you going to vanquish fear with the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God? If you don't know that, you, you're missing that weapon in your in your in your own life, metaphorically, physically. I mean, all I think across all you know across the physical and everything else too. Like it, this is stuff that. Like you say, these these frequencies, vibrations, everyone to call them that affect us scientifically affect us. These unseen things. We have very pra- practical. We have practical stuff here. I mean, and it's. I mean, it's, as as always though, with you know, it's like it's it's a simple answer. The process is not always simple, right? I was thinking about this a little bit, Laura. Anyone who's started a garden, you know, there's these studies where people played like basically heavy metal to plants, and then someone said loving things to plants, and they grew better. I've I've heard those things, you know, and you're like, ah, it's crazy. That's not true. But you think about it, the sound frequencies, and this is something that comes up on our show all the time, Luke. We're talking about how do they build these megaliths? How do they shape these rocks? Sound frequencies. How do you keep fear from from bouncing off or keep it from bouncing off you? You know, having a higher frequency, having a in, in, imploring love in your life, and and it sounds kind of hippie, and so I think a lot of Christians are just like, ah, I don't. I can't think about that stuff because it's it's too Woodstock for me, you know. Like right, we're down in the mud, gonna, rolling. You're gonna around smoke some weed with your, with your fla- with your flowers with your flowers yeah. shirt on, which is great. Or you're Michael Tellinger, and you're out there banging rocks on, against rocks, trying to see if they have any resonance. <laughs> yeah, we, we've heard some wild stuff on our show, but I mean, besides the DNA stuff, the sound of acoustic frequencies, vibrations, uh, ley lines, and all this stuff that that seems to be the other mm-hmm. major theme in our show. What is exciting to me is actually, you know, we're, we're able to extend our magnetic field beyond five feet. And so those people who develop uh, their spiritual life and commune regularly with God, they're actually able to shift the atmosphere miles away. And that is exciting. And so they've actually done some research on this and what they found that there was a study done um, in Washington, D.C., actually, and they they had a group of meditators. And when they would meditate at a certain time, they would look at the crime rates in the city. And what they found is that crime actually dropped 25 percent in Washington, D.C., when meditators came together to meditate. And, you know, for me, this is really exciting because. I feel like science is beginning to catch up with the understanding of the dunamis power of the Holy spirit that resides in us. And so it's not, I mean, it might sound hippie ish, but man, it is powerful. We can be these incredible spiritual warriors because we know this battle is not just in the physical realm. It is in the spiritual realm as well. And so, you know, God has provided us with this armor, like you were saying, we could just leave it laying there on the floor, metaphorically speaking, or we could put it on and arm ourselves and actually go into battle. And that's what is exciting is, is we, when we learn how to commune with God on a regular basis and develop that aspect of our spiritual life, we can shift the atmosphere miles away. Hmm. It's wild. It makes me think like the butter, like the butterfly effect, right? That's what I, the first thing I think of. You see the whole idea that if a butterfly flaps its wings, it create you know it, it can create a you know a gale force wind somewhere else. But that's mm-hmm. the idea though is these small ripples you may put out. It sounds it's starting to sound really hippie. Even, even choosing my words here, but you know you put out those those frequencies or vibrations or whatever. I guess you don't really realize like it's, the, the whole thing with the magnetic field is fascinating that you can extend your Think, and think about that biblically speaking. You can extend your influence. Right. You extend. What is it? The, the prayer of Jabez was a big thing. I think in the nineties, right. right? You can increase your lands. Remember that, Nate? Oh, I remember the prayer of Jabez. But like the the idea that you can inc- think about that in in in, in, a, in the realm 
talk, if you can extend your lands or God may extend your lands, you can do that with a spiritual influence. And that, and I mean, it's fascinating stuff. We need to get into ley lines and, and all that kind of stuff too. We can, let's go. It reminds me of our episode with Roger. He kept saying that these creatures were coming out of this portal on his farm. And he said, he kept saying, I, sh- I showed him no fear. I showed him no fear. And they were out there. And a lot of the creatures that people see, and this is kind of where our podcast lives, is that you know people see these demonic entities or literal creatures, werewolf creatures, Bigfoot stuff. People are terrified when they see this stuff. And there's this question along a lot of these shows is like, okay, what what is the point of all these weird cryptic creatures that hide out in the fringes? Are they just trying to scare us half to death? Is that part of what fuels them? Is that how they they operate? So there's a lot of shows that just live there. They tell creepy stories over and over and over again. And I think on Blurry Creatures, we're trying to say, this is where they come from. This is what their agenda is. And fear is a big part of that. They're trying to scare the daylights out of people. But at the same time, remain sort of elusive and on the fringe like they don't exist. But they come out, they scare people half to death, and then they leave. It's this just, keep the frequency low. We're going to scare people half to death, and then we're going to leave. They don't even... They'll debate we even exist. Well, they'll shame you if you do believe it, right? There, yeah. There's the bottom. There's the bottom hey. row. Yeah. So, you know, so shows like ours, we're trying to get down to what what are these things? And like Tim said on our last show, he's like, you if we, when you live in denial, he said a lot of people are getting abducted and they just, they live in denial. He says, that's not a good place to live. You've got to come back to the reality, confront your situation. And then he basically said, ask, ask God to make you a weapon against them. Mm -hmm. Go from the defense, like just constantly being in a state of pain and and, and affliction and and fear to a a state of offense. When I'm going to bring love into this, if you're going to abduct me, I'm going to bring in the, the, you know, God's love. Dr. Love (laughs) is going to be released. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to piss you off so much that you're you're going to stop abducting me because I'm bringing in God's heart into the room right now you know so anyway i think about what you were saying that roger uh, was sharing on your on your show that you know here these creatures they come out of these portals and he doesn't show them any fear and it makes me think about david you know when he was out you know keeping the sheep he had to face the lion and the bear And that was the stepping stone for him to develop the courage and realize that it's not in his own strength that he takes out these giants, but it's in, it's in the strength of the almighty God that he walks with. And so when he got onto the fields and he faced Goliath, everyone else was intimidated. Everyone else was paralyzed in fear, but David wasn't because he knew where his strength comes from. And I think that's what you know, if I can take what Roger is saying, the Lord's developing Roger to be a giant slayer. Now I know he's not necessarily slaying um, the creatures that come off his pro- or onto his property. I'm not saying that, but more in the spiritual realm. You know, how many of us, you know, in the since 2020, is the Lord really preparing? Has he, you know, he's brought me out of a place of hiddenness. Um, into a place where in my sphere of influence, I can make an impact um, because he's, he's equipped me to do that. And how many of us are in that place. And again, it goes back to, we cannot make room for fear. Now I say all that. And I just, as a small caveat, fear is a helpful emotion too. You know, we have that fight or flight instinct. And so fear is not always bad. In fact, we can use fear to fuel us to greater things. It's when we give in to fear. It's when we allow fear to overrule and overtake our lives. That's when we get stuck in that primitive brain. And so I'm just, you know, so many of us are, I think, waking up to this and we just need to encourage each other, like be strong and courageous. How many times did the Lord tell Joshua that, you know, as they were going in to face the giants and reclaiming territory? Joshua and Caleb said they could, they could take on the giants, and the other guys are like, no, right. I can't do it. What was the difference? They both saw the same giants, right. and two of them said we can do it. You know. And how often in the Bible does, is, do we hear from God, fear not? Fear not. Exactly. Fear not. Fear not. Fear not, I'm with you. Fear not, I'm with you always. 
Mm-hmm. It's a pretty it's a pretty consistent because we're dumb humans, it's a pretty consistent <laughs> message to get into our heads, right? Do you think that people like they listen to sad music, depressing movies? They sort of like you know what I mean? They're sort of being lulled to this lower frequency and they don't even realize it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. What about emo, Nate? What about emo music, Nate? Exactly. You gotta stop playing that emo. You gotta put on the Beach Boys, good vibrations. There's a time for sad music. <laughs> It was in the early, it was in the early two thousands, and but you know, every once in a while we need to re- revisit that. But there's times when I I'm literally like I I turn this off because if I start listening to some sad music, I'm like I never really thought about it in like a spiritual term. Like it's not just how you feel. So there could be something even greater going on. Yeah, put on that Sinatra. You know, start feeling good, dance around a little bit. Right, right. Do we want to let's get into that Nephilim Mother project. <laughs> All right. I know Nate's been waiting. Well, no, I just. Tim just blew my mind open and I just want to keep I know it's different like sounds like it's happening on earth mm-hmm. We're not, it's not happening in spaceships so it's different um, right. I think as, as wild as that sounds you know I, I think probably both are occurring um, and so let me before I kind of dive into this a little bit I just want to give you a little bit of an understanding of my own process with this so I've really only been researching this more intently in the last three weeks. And so I have a whole lot more questions than answers. And so what I share is based on, you know, little nuggets of truth that the Lord has deposited over time. He's kind of built this foundation. And then I had what I would call a divine appointment or a divine encounter about three weeks ago. And I met somebody that um, solidified a lot of this for me. So actually it was super encouraging because when I wrote the book that I did, The Roots of the Federal Reserve, you know, so much of it was on tracing the Nephilim, you know, from the days of Noah to the dollar bill. And when I started out, I really had no idea where this would end. I didn't even know if it would become a book. I, I was just being obedient to what I felt like the Holy Spirit was calling me to do. And so each day, you know, I'd wake up and say, okay, Lord, what are we going to research today? Where are you going to take me? What does this look like? So again, I had no idea how it would all come together. But when I met this person about three weeks ago, they, I won't use their name because they're doing really sensitive work with people. And they asked me to keep their name confidential, but um, the work that this person is doing is essentially boots on the ground with people that have birthed hybrids. And so it brought validity to a a lot of what I've written in my book and and it kind of solidified it. So I think what, what God's busy doing in me is just, he's building this scaffolding, this framework to contain the understanding. Um, But I'm, I'm kind of not very far along in this. So I just wanted to lay that out. Now, this person that I met, um, they've been doing the work of deprogramming and doing deliverance on survivors of satanic ritual abuse. And these people have dissociative identity disorder, um, which is formally called multiple personality disorder for those that don't know. And this person has been doing this work for about 20 plus years. And they actually connected me with the work of Doug Riggs. And he actually, um, he, he's on the internet. He has an incredible website called DougRiggs.org for those of your listeners that want to dive deeper into this than what I'll share today. But he's been doing this work for 30 plus years. And just a small um, connection point, my husband um, reminded me that about 15 years ago, Doug Riggs came to our church because we have a deliverance ministry at our church. And at the time we had someone in our congregation that was was a satanic ritual abuse survivor. And so we brought in Doug Riggs to train the deliverance team and how to work with these individuals because, you know, most oftentimes they have dissociative identity disorder. And so you're dealing with a matrix of personalities within one individual. And so it's very complex work. So all that to say, you know, just three weeks into researching this, but I do feel like it's coming together. So I just want to remind us as I, as I share some of these things that we can't be deceived in thinking that the Nephilim only roamed the earth during the days of antiquity. Okay. So Satan has been 
busy building an army of hybrids. And he actually used Hitler as one of his agents to do this. And I, I want to read an excerpt from something that Hitler spoke to his Nazi party members that actually reveals this agenda. He said, the real destiny of man is something that ordinary men cannot conceive and would be unable to comprehend, even if given a glimpse of it. Our revolution is a final stage in an evolution that will end by abolishing history and abolishing man as we know it. It is my ultimate aim to perform an act of creation, a divine operation, the goal of biological mutation, which will result in an unprecedented exaltation of the human race and the appearance of a new race of heroes, demigods, and godmen. My party comrades have no conception of the dreams that haunt my mind or of the grandiose edifice of which the foundations at least will have been laid before I die. The world has reached a turning point and will undergo an upheaval which the uninitiated cannot understand. 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 So what happened is this, this Nephilim Mother Project, or it's also called the Hybrid Breeding Program, it began in the 1940s. And Hitler developed a trauma-based mind control program that was run by himself and also Joseph Mengele. He was a Nazi scientist and he also was a sorcerer. So together, they set the stage for multiple incursions through what's called a conception ritual. Now, Satan knows those assets he has, the strongest assets within families. So you have this generational iniquity that runs in bloodlines that builds and builds and builds this power. And Satan knows which bloodlines are his greatest asset. And those are referred to as the 13 royal bloodlines. And so daughters have been hand selected from these royal bloodlines to be groomed to birth Nephilim or hybrids. So let me explain a little bit about the conceptual or conception ritual. So that consists of two people, one of which is a royal, coming together for a pre planned conception. So they have sex with one another. And at the same time that they're having sex around the world, you have rituals involving blood sacrifice. And so because it's all synchronized, you have this convergence of power that comes together and it creates a triple helix DNA within the child that's born from that conception ritual. So the third strand of the DNA is recognized only in the spiritual realm. Then from the daughters that are born as a result of this conception ritual, they're born straight into the Luciferian occult. And so then at birth, they're actually given to surrogate parents who are, um, have been paid by um, these royal bloodlines to raise these daughters and allow them to be ritually abused their entire lives. And these surrogate parents, um, you know, live in different parts of the world. So essentially you have a daughter that is born of the royal bloodline raised by a surrogate parent so that no one knows that this daughter is a royal. Does that make sense? Yeah, Laura, this makes you think of, is this the same thing was going on with L. Ron Hubbard and John, John Parsons, Aleister Crowley and the Babylon the Babylon working when they were, wasn't there some whole thing about how they were doing some sex rituals as well that were meant to, to birth, who knows, who knows what, but it just, it, it rung that bell when you, when you were saying that, that like I've heard about something like this before. That would make sense to me. I have not heard Doug Riggs um, tie the two together, but again, I have, I have not exhaustively read his material, but it sounds like very much the same thing. Okay. All right. So now you have these, these girls 
that were born as a result of this conception ritual. And then they are satanic ritually abused throughout their childhood. And, you know, I won't go into some of what I've heard, but the trauma is so horrific that what it does is it creates um, a dissociative state. And so these girls, they fragment into multiple personalities. So then at the point of fragmentation, Joseph Mengele is present for these or, or was present for these. And what he would do is he would channel a principality into the newly formed personality. So what you have, and, and those of you, I never watched the movie Sybil, but I understand kind of what it was about. And um, Sybil was a story of a girl that got abused and had multiple personalities. And I, I don't know how many she had, but you know, let's say it was less than 10. What we're talking here from the report of the person I met three weeks ago, and then also from Doug Riggs, is you have thousands, if not tens of thousands of personalities formed within these girls. And so it actually builds this matrix of personalities that are controlled and governed by principalities. So you, you have that level of trauma uh, mixed with the fact that they have a triple helix DNA. So they're groomed to the point that at the age of 13 is when they're ready to then become impregnated by a principality and they give birth to a hybrid. Now on Doug Riggs um, website, you can actually listen to, there's an interview with two hybrid birthing moms and they go into a little bit of detail of what that experience was. Um, but I will just say the way they described it, it is the most horrific rape you could ever imagine. Like it, it goes beyond imagination what they experienced um, having a principality impregnate them. And so they give birth to literal hybrids. This, Laura, this is fascinating in the sense that like we all have heard probably with Hitler, this idea of the Aryan race, right. Right? This, he was going to create this super race, but it never, I never associated the idea that everybody knows that, that Hitler and his, and his minions were involved in the occult and they did occult practices and they have the buildings and the places and I've, and I've watched enough on this but to connect the two, I mean, this makes so much sense. And the things that are out there that we know are out there about the cult and Satanism and Hitler and then his his desire for this German Superman race, as they called right. it. Right. And really, really, he was just re just trying to replicate what the Genesis 6 agenda. Wow, that's uh, that's crazy. I mean, not crazy, but I mean, it makes it it's like a ton of dots connecting in, in a lot of ways. Yeah. And so what Satan's been doing, like I, I mentioned earlier, is he's been building this army of hybrids and it's all for in preparation of the great war and revelation. Now, Satan doesn't know when that's going to happen, but he's preparing. And I think what's important for us to understand is that God is allowing these hybrids to be born in this generation so according to Doug Riggs, the first hybrid that was born was in 1969. And so we have hybrids since then being born on this earth. And, um, you know, I, I share these things, not uh, again, not to allow fear to creep in, but I believe the Lord wants us to understand, understand the times in which we live and understand what the enemy is up to, because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And you know, it really makes me think about, you brought up Luke earlier, um, Ephesians 6, and in verse 10, it says, be supernaturally infused with strength through your life union with the Lord Jesus. Stand victorious with the force of his explosive power flowing in and through you. And so when we recognize the power that we have in us, then we don't have to live in that fear. We know that God is raising us up and, and we are, I believe, living in a time where we have to rise up in our true identity as ambassadors of Christ. You know, Jesus is head over every authority um, and principality. And so, and he calls us to take our stand against the devil's schemes. And so I believe that, 
you know, he's revealing these things that were hidden in darkness so that we're armed with wisdom, we're armed with knowledge and understanding and truth. And so that we can stand in the power that God has for us um, through his Holy Spirit. And if if I could, I just want to read Ephesians 6, 11 through 18. And I believe it's in the Passion Translation. But for me, when I read this now, I've I've read Ephesians 6 you know, I love that passage because I'm a spiritual warrior and I'm constantly putting on my armor, but I read it in this translation and given what I just shared, it really starts to come together. And so this isn't just hippie talk. This is God equipping us with how to war against these things that are happening all around us. So it says, put on God's complete set of armor provided for us so that you will be protected as you fight against the evil strategies of the accuser. Your hand-to-hand combat is not with human beings, but with the highest principalities and authorities operating in rebellion under the heavenly realms. For they are a powerful class of demon gods and evil spirits that hold this dark world in bondage. Because of this, You must wear all the armor that God provides you so you're protected as you confront the slanderer. For you are destined for all things and will rise victorious. Put on truth as a belt to strengthen you to stand in triumph. Put on holiness as the protective armor that covers your heart. Stand on your feet alert, then you'll always be ready to share the blessings of peace every battle take faith as your wraparound shield for it is able to extinguish the blazing arrows coming at you from the evil one embrace the power of salvation's full deliverance like a helmet to protect your thoughts from lies and take the mighty razor sharp spirit sword of the spoken word of god So I just, I'm so encouraged by that passage. And I, um, you know, in sharing these things, God has called me to expose the fruitless deeds of darkness, but also to be a distributor of hope. And one thing I just want to share to kind of wrap this up a little bit is, is that these um, hybrid birthing moms are actually coming to know the Lord Jesus. Many of them are now believers And so what they're describing is that their core person sought after Jesus. And what that allowed them to do is that kept them alive during the horrific experiences that they've had. And by doing the hard work of deprogramming and deliverance, what they've been able to do is actually displace the principalities from those multiple personalities within them. And so their humanity is growing and displacing the principalities. And what's so beautiful to me in that is that we are never without hope. You know, these girls were raised in the Luciferian occult. And one of them even described that she's seen Lucifer before Lucifer is a creature and she's seen him, you know, her, her, surrogate family and the ritual abuse, they would, they would call Lucifer forth and she would see him as a creature, but she deep down inside knew that there was something greater than this creature that they were calling upon. And that's when I think she was like three or four as a girl. That's when she started calling on the name of Jesus and, and seeking Jesus out. Now, it took years for her to understand who this God was that she believed was beyond even Lucifer. But to me, that's such a beautiful story of redemption and hope that that we are never without hope. And what's beautiful, too, about this is now that many of them are believers, they're actually exposing the darkness within these Luciferian occults. Yeah. Yeah, it's like like we were saying. I was saying earlier, like the, you go for, you go to the offense, you know, you start operating, and it's, I'm going to take this down. You know, I, the, you you groomed me as one of your minions, and I'm gonna I'm gonna turn myself against you. We know from the Genesis six account what the hybrids look like, right? Like from that account, 
I would say that we, there's not a lot of giants, eight foot to twelve foot giants running around that I've seen. Although we've heard about some in the Louisiana swamps. Do you have any idea what the, from any of these what, what these hybrid yes. hybrids look like? Are they, they look like you and I? Because yeah. they're not expressing the same way that it, as we would have said in pre-flood, right? Or even the Rephaim we saw with with Goliath and his brothers, and them being maybe not as big as the pre-flood giants, but big big dudes, right? right? Well. Great question. So like you're saying, we know that there are giants that have roamed the earth, like literal giants. You know, that's one of the things that I I trace in my book, but the Nephilim that are being born right now, since 1969, they look like us. And so what these people that are doing the work and also the hybrid moms, they're reporting is that all of them that are born are men, males. And they are kind of the quintessential man. So they are highly intelligent. They're strong, but they're breathtakingly beautiful. And so they are not giants and they are meant to blend into society. Nate, Mm-mm. I'm worried about you. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, that's what Tim was talking about, Luke. You know, that they're... There is this Bre- breathtakingly beautiful. I don't think I don't. So no, no, we're safe. You and I are safe, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's 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 fascinating. It sounds like there's a lot of reading programs going on in the last couple of weeks, and I know people listening to the show are probably just like, "Dang, this this show just got pretty heavy and intense," you know, because we went from there's Bigfoot out there to there's all kinds of hybrid human beings that could be walking among us and i don't know well, I, lo- I love what i love what laura said though like that there's hope right like there's look that even in in the the midst of the worst of the worst depravity that god is 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 pulling and redeeming people out of out of the pit i mean if he's doing that then there's hope for all of us right well i was going to say it reminded me of something that that book you know bring the gospel to every creature that rob rob talked about this guy who wrote a book says you know bring the gospel to every creature and his whole thing that there is hope and salvation for all the hybrids and the chimeras. And we haven't brought him on the show, but I looked into this guy. He wrote, wrote this book about that. And so there's a lot of people in this, this space who are trying to say, look, they're, the gospel extends to these entities as well. Um, I don't know. I don't know how to, it, it's, it's next level. I mean, because they're human, right? And that was the one thing with Tim, what we're talking about is like, the Vatican now is is trying to incorporate. We can we can take the gospel to the aliens, but the reality is that the the biblical narrative is 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 bent, and Jesus was here to save humanity. And so I could see that there's shades of gray, right? If you're a hybrid and you're part human, then you do have that advantage of having at least part of you <laughs> being a bit able to be saved. And that's where it starts to get weird. But like I mean, I draw the line there. The whole creature thing and anything past that to me is like. I align with what I think Tim had to say about the gospel and Jesus coming for humanity, right? It's for the sons of Adam and our, our birthright. And then also our, our salvation and hope because as sons of Adam and daughters of Adam is that, is that Jesus came to redeem us. Um, Beyond that, I guess we're just talking about conjecture, but if you go to other creatures, if we're talking like the ETs and all that kind of stuff, I don't think I align with the Vatican on that. I think it's, I think the biblical story is about humanity well, I'm not, I'm not talking about aliens specifically. No, but I mean, I, just about, wanted to, I want to divide that there when you were saying that, just to be make sure we weren't we weren't contradicting what we what we talked about last show. Well, I mean, there's just there's a lot of creatures out there. As we, we've accurately named our our podcast, there's a lot more creatures than we want to admit. Right? Part of us just says, "Oh, there's just yeah, there's like maybe a werewolf creature. There, there's probably Bigfoot, but that's about it. You know, that's 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 as weird as it gets. Merman." <laughs> merman but but you know as we go back it's and we and we bring on more guests laura we're finding there's a lot of creatures out there and you know some people when it gets into the abduction stuff and the breeding programs they they tune out they check out i just want to i'm just trying to speak to some of those people who are you know they're they have a knee-jerk reaction like ah, that's crazy like it's not happening like i can i can handle bigfoot bigfoot's a fun thing it's conspiracy. It's it's like a fun conspiracy theory, right? There's this giant human ape-like thing out there, and he's just looking at people's windows, and it's not that scary, right? Yeah, unless you're Duke. 
then it's kind of scary. <laughs> well, Duke saw some like some of the some of the nastier ones. Yeah, there were with fangs and but yeah. But with Laura and Tim, we've, we're talking about like a, a a program. What about what about some of the things that Tim said, Laura? I don't know if you how far you've gone down these rabbit holes, but like there's supposedly this insectolin looking creatures that are ahead of the abduction program that are running it with the gray aliens who are like these these hybrids. And in, in the very beginning of the show, you talked about sort of a biological drone or, or flesh from somebody. I can't remember exactly what you were talking about. Was, there was like some sort of... I was mentioning how the geneticist Craig Ventner created yes. um, synthetic life from bioengineering a cell. And that could be used as a bio, biological weapon. So that's what mm. Tim's basically saying that the gray aliens are that are abducting people they're like they're like drones they're not like demons that are that very much have like a weird personality they're kind of like little schizophrenic kind of you know they're just L- lustful vengeful yeah homicide hom- homicide homicidal maniacs that kind of stuff like we, we assume with the with the, with the giants right that's what and then the, you know we in the weeds here but and here we are but, laura <laughs> but this is some of the creature stuff I wanted to ask. I was kind of letting you go on. What do you think about that? Are you do you think these gray aliens are these biological drones and they've made them and they're carrying out like some of these types of creatures? I know that I, I don't know. I just don't. I'm just trying to see if all this stuff connects because this sounds like something different than what Tim was describing. So I'm trying to see if there's a parallel between. Yeah, I could share what I've been um, listening to with you know, what these hybrid birthing moms shared and what they talk about is, so there are probably thousands of hybrids um, from what they reported that are now have been birthed since 1969. Um, They talked about that, that many of them are um, sequestered to the second heaven so um, they actually, Doug Riggs talks about that UFOs um, aren't necessarily spaceships created by aliens, um, but more that they are, you know, black ops, military, you know, type creations that have been around for quite some time. And hybrids overtook them and are using them as a form of transportation. So the aliens or the extraterrestrials that we might think of could just be these hybrids that are using what we think are UFOs, but are, you know, anti-gravity spaceships that have been around for some time. They essentially took them over and, like I said, use them as a form of transportation. So that's one thing that these birthing moms reported is that, you know, some of the hybrids are sequestered to the second heaven. There are some that are walking around on earth um, that you know, intermingle among us. Hey, Laura, can I, can I stop yeah. real quick? Just because I don't know, I don't know, and I'm sure some of our listeners won't. What do you mean by the second heaven? Well, that would be like space, um, interdimensional. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. So then, then we have these hybrids that walk among us on the earth. But then they said um, there's another large portion of them that are in underground bases. And so they actually talked about the deep underground military bases. So when they shared that, I mean, I literally just listened to this yesterday. So this is very fresh. But when they shared that, all these dots start coming together, these connection points. Um, And it, it makes a lot of sense to me. Now, like I said, in a month's time, as I do more research into this area, I might have, you know, different perspective. But I'm just passing on what I listened to yesterday from these moms that have birthed hybrids and they've actually they've come across the hybrids that they've birthed um periodically and they are engaged in luciferian occult rituals well yeah tim tim pretty much described that to the t said that the dumbs deep underground military bases are where a lot of this warfare is going on there is a hybrid program that is happening we, we, we're kind of in that space now. We're talking about it. You know, a lot of people are just, I don't know, Luke. It's its one of those things where it gets a little conspiratorial, but I, I don't know. I, I think it's well, real. I think it's happening. It's all, yeah, we're all, I mean, we're, a lot of the stuff we can't put our finger on necessarily. We, we have to operate in, in, in the realm of theory, right? Until we have 
some of the stuff landed on our doorstep and we can dissect it. We don't really know. And and I don't know that we will know. But I, that's exciting, Laura. I, I, we would definitely want to have... I mean, you're one of our favorite guests here. We'll have you back when, when you have a little more on the hybrid mothers and, and down that road. So, as, as always, let everybody know where they can find you and... and um, you know, where they can reach out to you. I know some of our members have actually reached out to you, so I don't know if the brother to apologize or, or, or maybe No, or it's what. actually <laughs> been wonderful. I, I love it. Um, as I mentioned, I think on a previous podcast with you guys, one of the things that I think is so important is that we connect with one another. You know, I, I'm a psychologist, I'm a spiritual warrior. I want to equip people. I, I want to learn. So we need to connect with one another. So I welcome people reaching out to me. Um, you know, I might not always be able to get back to you right away, but I just, I welcome it. So you can find me. My website is no longer enslaved.com. And, you know, you can email me there. There's a contact form that you can fill out. And then also, if you're interested in reading my book, it's The Roots of the Federal Reserve Tracing the Nephilim from Noah to the US dollar. And that you can purchase on my website, but also on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. Awesome, yeah. Bust that. We need to have we need to have a ley lines episode too, Nate. I mean, at some point, that's a little, we get a lot of questions. Maybe we'll do that with as a yeah. members thing. I know we've talked to you a little bit about that as mm-hmm. well. Um, we we'll get a lot of questions about ley lines, especially with Roger talking about them, and then you came on and you talked a bit about spiritual mapping and and pushing back the darkness and how that relates. And mm-hmm. that is di- it's a completely different topic than what we're talking about now. But um, we appreciate your your work and your and your wisdom and dropping knowledge on just a couple guys with beards here asking <laughs> questions yeah appreciate it thank you so much yeah get get your old no fear t-shirt on get That's out right. there and get after it yeah put on your no 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 fear teacher of teacher of, of god that's right yeah, right somewhere it fits in there yeah well appreciate you laura thanks so much for coming on and absolutely thanks, thanks for having me guys